Oh, Arthur. If anybody ever told me I'd get invited to a weekend seminar on organic vegetables in Milton Keynes and I'd say no, I wouldn't believe them. And I can't come. I've got a bit of a do on. A wedding. I'll think of you as I force a champagne down my gullet. A bit of a do. A bit of a do. Smiling faces in public places. Trying to hide your problems from your friends and relations. A bit of a do. Invited to a bit of a do. It's a small town, posh, posh affair. Best behavior, being aware of others who are doing it too. Others who are seeing through you. A bit of a do. All tickety boo. New dimensions for family tensions. Mentioning the little things that shouldn't be mentioned. A bit of a do, bit of a do. Invited to a bit of a do. We do, do. Oh, Lord. What? Nothing. No, please. Don't let's start drifting apart again. I need you today, Liz. I'm scared. Scared? The great anthropologist who's faced headhunters, witch doctors, and poison blowpipes. Yes, the great bachelor, the great wanderer, the great loner, terrified. You're terrified she may not turn up. Good heavens, no. She wouldn't do that. Twice? Would you be happy if she didn't turn up? Really, Geoffrey, what a thing to ask. Of course I would. I'd be ecstatic. Oh, Liz. And I thought you were friends again. I was very emotional at Neville's funeral. I said some foolish things I bitterly regret. Such as? Such as, shall we end this stupid feud, Rita, whereupon she marries my brother when I've discovered him for the first time, her son exposes my son, loses him his job. Damn old Simcox. You still haven't told me why you said, oh, Lord. Last time I stood here, I was getting married. Oh, Lord. Sorry. Oh, I don't want to cast a pall over your great day. Liz, Rita and I both want you to be a frequent and regular visitor at our house. Watching you touching each other. Enviously listening to your creaking bed springs. Terrific. I can't wait. Simon. Fragile. Handle with care. Oh, Lord. Hello, Mother. You look fantastic. Everyone will think you're the bride. Not this time, Simon. Oh, Lord. Crunch, thud. Sacked estate agent drops brick. I'm sorry, Mother. A minor indiscretion compared to your recent efforts. I can just forgive you for being dishonest, Simon, but for being stupid enough to be found out by Elvis, never. <sighs> Bad luck. Lucinda all right? Oh, yes, the, the wedding isn't off. It's just postponed till I find myself a job. Hello. Rita. <sighs> well, I've turned up. Unlike most other people, it seems. Elvis rang. He's been bleeped. Emergency. He'll meet me here. Who'd have sons? Monsters. And Paul? Oh, I'll, I'll just slope off tactfully. Thank you, Simon. Do it tactfully enough. Without a word, we won't even notice. My oldest son's been bleeped, and my youngest son's gone fishing. Fishing? He's finding it difficult to cope with life out of prison. And Crowded rooms make him panic, and I don't think he relished the idea of meeting Elvis. He phoned, though, cried a bit, sent us both his love and blessing. Fishing. Today. And him a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jenny not here yet? Uh, no, not a sign. Nor Carol. Yes, well, I'm afraid my marrying you is making me a traitor to the cause to which I recruited Carol. Even you changing your name to mine hasn't mollified her. No Betty and Rodney, though. That's odd. Mm. Fuming. Back to square one. Oh, dear. Eric! Thank you so much for inviting me, Mrs. Uh, well, it's still Simcock, isn't it? At least for a few minutes. Please, call me Rita. Do you know, in my career, I've done 17 nuptials, uh, Miss Rita. 17. Amazing. Well, no, no. What I wanted to say was, 
Well, yes, I suppose it's not a bad tribute, really. I'd never really thought of that. But what I wanted to say was, you're the first one ever to invite me to the ceremony, and I'm... Well, I'm... Eric! <laughs> Mm. Oh, I won't wash for a month. <laughs> no, I've checked everything at the hotel, Mr. Ellsworth Smythe, and it's all well... Uh... Take a debut. Amazing. You've taken the very words out of my mouth. You must be psychic. Oh, but you're one in a million, Mrs. Rita. You've, you've seen through the barm and to the human being underneath, and, well, I'll, I'll never, never forget that. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I swore us to secrecy, Mum. Well, quite a coincidence, Ted. No, not a coincidence, Rita. So what's the big idea, then? Sabotage our wedding day? No, 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 of course not. Absolutely not. Would I do a thing like that? No, no, I would not. No, look, look over there, look. They're all Sandras. There'll be even more at the reception. How many have I been able to rustle up? Look, five. I'm a social outcast. Please, Ted, I don't want to cry on my wedding day. No, but I mean, could I formally invite my ex-wife and her fiancé? Could I formally invite my... Your ex-lover? Please, Rita, not today. Today I want to be a day of reconciliation all round. Do you? Yes, I do. That's why I thought if I <clears throat> bumped into you here, I could say, please, pop into our reception. Well, strangely enough, Ted, Rita and I both decided to go to our reception. Yeah, but I know that's the whole point. They're in the same hotel. You what, Ted? Yes, yeah. You see, you're in the Sir Leonard Hutton room and we're in the Geoffrey Boycott room, which is much smaller and the service is very slow, so we won't upstage you. No, I've asked the others to pop in for half an hour and have a drink. Rodney and Betty seem quite keen. So, please, come and have a glass of champagne. Astis Bermante. We prefer it. Yeah. Well, thank you. But, I mean, it's a bit... Well, we'll see, shall we? Oh, please do. Hey, you look right belting, Mrs Simcock. Thank you. You don't look so bad yourself. Mrs Simcock. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mum. Hello, stranger. Well, I wasn't sure what sort of a reception you'd give me. Jenny. Friendly, of course. After all, you've twice walked out on Simcock boys. I applaud that. Mum. The only slight cloud being that both times you've left a Simcock boy, it's been to move in with his brother, but that's a mere detail. Mum. Crying? Yes. Good. <laughs> Hello, Carol. Jenny's gone back to Paul. Good. Will you pop into our reception? Hooray! My life's ambition achieved. The pinnacle climb. No, but I mean, we'll be going away for good. Ah, well, now that is a cause for celebration. In that case, I should be delighted. No, Lucinda. Not yet. Ah. Save your R's, Elvis. She hasn't ditched me. No. No. She wouldn't. Ah. Belt up. Can't we at least try to be civil today? Not for me, for your mum and dad. Oh, all right. I mean, we don't have to talk if we can avoid it. But if we can't avoid it, and I hope we can, but if we can't, let's at least try to be coolly polite. Well, all right. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Elvis, you've upset Simon and Jenny already, haven't you? What have you said? Well, let's think. Um, to Simon I said, no, Lucinda. Then, ah. Then, no. Then, ah, again. To Jenny I said, uh, oh, all right. Well, all right and all right. My word, you're surpassing even your normal level of inarticulacy. Mum? Why don't you try total silence? Britain's first Trappist philosopher. Mum? Hey, you upset your mother. What do you said to her? Oh, heck, I, I said Mum and Mum. Don't speak to your mother like that. Dad! Have you upset your father now? I'm sorry. But how do you think I feel? On me wedding day, not turning up to collect me as arranged and not telling me why? I couldn't. Look, Mum, I'm here now, and I want to help make this a happy day for you. I've switched my bleeder off. My God. Greater love hath no man. 
Thank you, Elvis. Mm. Rita, Rita, we had no alternative. He swore us to secrecy. And for the first time in your lives, you kept a secret. Congratulations. Oh, don't be like that, Rita. It's not every day we're invited to two weddings at the same time. No, how will your system work? Will one of you get drunk at each reception? Rita? Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, not today. It's just with me previous and seeing Ted and everything, mm, I'm... We understand. Well, we believe, don't we, Betty? Oh, we do, we do, mm. utterly. Uh, Ted's done it for the very best of motives. A day of reconciliation all round. Mm. If we hadn't believed that, we'd never have come, Rita. We are your friends. We want to drink to your Ted's health, and we want to drink to young Sandra's health. And to your health, and to Geoffrey's health. Everybody's health. I think I believe you. Thank you. <laughs> I do believe you. You really are the very best of friends. Yes, listen, I'd like to accept Ted's invitation. Oh, tremendous. So would I. Ted, I'd like to accept your invitation, and we hope that you'll come to our reception as well. Oh, good. Well, yes, yes, Rita. You're right. Let us make this a day of reconciliation all round. Yeah. Come on, Geoffrey. What did they say? Oh, great news. They've accepted a day of reconciliation all round. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Simon. No Lucinda. What's she done? Ditched you? Has <laughs> she? <laughs> She's... What? Oh. oh. There we go, sir. Just the job. Tickety-boo. Oh, dear, we do look long. Cheer up, sir. It may never happen. It has happened, do A touch of the 83, sir. Very fine vintage, as I'm sure you will know, being something of a connoisseur. Well, yes, I, I think I can say I know my way round a wine list. Oh, thank you, Eric. You're a treasure. Oh, thank you, sir. Your lovely lady not here yet? Not indisposed, I trust. Why don't you cut the tittle-tattle and concentrate on doing the job you're paid to do? A drop more of the sparkling grape, ladies. Oh, right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eric. There you go. Very special champagne for two very special ladies <laughs> who are, if you'll forgive the play on words, as bubbly as the bubbly. <laughs> oh, dear, excuse me. It's just she's all churned up about Elvis and Simon oh. and Elvis and Paul and her mother and Rita. Uh, it, it was just you being so cheerful upset her, I think. Good afternoon, madam. May I replenish your glass at all? The funeral's over, Eric. For goodness sake, cheer up or I'll cry. Ah. Ah? Well, yes. Um, Geoffrey tells me that you had a little chat with him. Ah. He tells me that you regret suggestions made at the... Um... Funeral, Rita, my husband's funeral. It's not something I can't face mentally. Although, of course, I don't want to harp on it and cast a cloud of depression over your joyful day. That you regret saying that we should end our feud. Oh, I must be careful what I say to Geoffrey. It'll all come back to you. Well, we are married. <laughs> yes, yes, I remember the ceremony. I thought the registry office people did their best to make it seem a happy occasion. Geoffrey also tells me that you don't relish the prospect of... Intruding on your marital bliss. And amazingly enough, I don't. Look, what I really wanted to say... You mean all this so far has been small talk? Well, no, look... Geoffrey and I are going to wish Ted and Sandra well, and we wondered if you'd find it easier to go to Ted and Sandra's wedding if you came with us. Why should I find it difficult? Well, you're having... with Ted, and... and it's not being... My kind of thing? Why are you frightened of saying it? No, it isn't. They're not my kind of people. However, I shall put in an appearance. But not tagging along with you, either as a sop to your conscience or as a pathetically lonely figure to remind you of your good fortune. 
Well, you've taken my brother, Rita. Cease this charade that you want me to. Rita, Jeffrey. Oh, great. You came, you came. Great. Great. Come, come in. Come on and meet, uh, meet everybody. Um, uh, excuse me, everybody, everybody. Just a bit. I'd, I'd like you very much to, uh, to meet... Uh, Rita, my, my, uh, my, my very, very good friend, Rita uh, um, Ellsworth Smythe. Sprague. Rita Sprague. Yes, Sprague. Sprague? Rita Sprague. Rita... Yes, uh, Sprague. And her, um, her fear, uh, husband, husband, Jeffrey... Jeff... Jeffrey Sprague. Sprague, yes, Jeff Sprague. And uh, I'd like you to meet, um, well, this, look, this is Sandra's mum. Hello. Yeah, this is, and Sandra's nan, Sandra's dad. Oh. There's the Sandra's brothers here, look. Darren, Warren, and Dean. See? <laughs> and there, uh, who else? We... Oh, it looks somebody else should be serving you today. Don't make me inferior, don't serve him, folk. And it's my wedding day. And why shouldn't I do what makes me happy? Because it's happy day, isn't it, Rita? Oh, it is. It certainly is. Oh. I know. You give a dog a bad name and the mud sticks. You what, Rodney? Well, he sighed because when Eric saw us, he turned away because we have a reputation which is no longer justified, but once won, isn't easily on one. No, no, I sighed because of the young people, because I noticed at the registry office tensions. Oh, well, right, well, you could not notice. Mm, and I thought tensions, sadnesses at a wedding, it's a pity, at a double wedding, it's a double pity. And I thought... Let's go and pour some of the calming balm of our experience over the stormy waters of their immature emotions. Well, if you put it like that, um... <laughs> ah. Oh, Elvis! Now, Rodney and I, we couldn't help noticing, well, you couldn't. Not that we're poking our noses in. Well, we wouldn't. No, but you couldn't. And we did. Notice that you and Jenny... That I'm barely speaking to the little cow. Yeah. Well, no, no, not the little cow, no, but... Oh, yes. <laughs> Children, make your peace for your mothers. Absolutely. Especially for Rita on her wedding day. And for your father, Elvis. On his wedding day. Quite unusual, really, isn't it? Both your parents marrying on the same day. <laughs> I mean, when they're not marrying each other. Betty. Hmm? So, so uh, how about it? Well, why not? Maybe Jenny meant it when she said she loved me. Maybe our love could have survived anything except martyrdom. Martyrdom? Well, you can't resist feeling sorry for people, and without Paul in prison, you were bound to feel sorrier for him than for me. That is totally untrue, Elvis. Elvis didn't mean your love for him wasn't genuine. Yes, he did. Yes, I did. I'm only glad I went back to Paul before you exposed Simon and lost him his job, and it seems his fiance. Because if I'd gone back afterwards, everyone would have said I'd gone because you exposed him, and I went because I love Paul. More than ever now after prison, which has matured him. Oh, it's the suffering matures people syndrome, is it? Well, I've suffered as well, you know, being dragged through the emotional mangle by you, so I'm just as mature as him, so they're fish face. And you needn't think I'm sorry, because I'm glad, because it's Carol I love. Oh, um, Carol, love. Look, come and try and get these young people to look on the bright side. I am trying to look on the bright side. I'm trying to forget her. I wish you would. Elvis, you were friendly with Carol once. Why don't you ask her out again? Oh, no chance. Oh, but he's just told us. You don't <coughs> mind, do you, Elvis? No, of course you don't. He loves you. Well, obviously, linguistic analysis was not your strong point in philosophy. You what? Words have meanings. Love has a meaning. It means love. It doesn't mean knock about with till somebody cleverer comes along. Well, nobody cleverer came along. Are you saying she's cleverer than me? No. Are you saying I'm stupider than her? No, no. no. You're of identical intellectual ability. Oh, what a cop out! Right. I don't think it was very clever what you did with my husband, Carol. Hell's bells, Jenny. Nor do I, but that was years ago. I was an immature kid then. Simon, come and sort these people out. What's wrong? Oh, relationships, love, life, families. Oh, that. Well, they'll all grow up one day. Does that include me? Well, yes, frankly. You pompous idiot. Well spoken for once. I suppose everybody's right sometimes. It's a law of averages. Don't start being sarcastic about my sister, you rancid slug. I can defend myself without your support, thank you very much, Simon. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I think I'm well out of it. Well, go then. I will, don't worry. Oh, Lord, I shouldn't have said that. Not today. Carol, I've been thinking. Wonders will never cease. Kids, that's the trouble with being mature for your age. All your friends seem so childish. Well, 
We tried. Yes. We were right to try. Yes. Peacemaker has a hard road to hoe. Very true. Ah. Oh. <sighs> Let's go give Ted our blessing. Good idea. We might find easier to get a drink in there. Mm. Well, it'll be all right in time. You just can't stand crowded rooms or Elvis. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. What's he doing going fishing for, any road? I mean, he's a vegetarian. Well, he doesn't catch anything. He just sits big gravel pits and dreams. He'll be all right in time. <laughs> yeah. No, they're a lovely family, Rita. I'm a lucky man. Don't they, uh... Aren't they worried? What about me being much older than her? Well, yes, partly. Well, I suppose they would have preferred somebody much younger at first, but they've, they've come to appreciate my many qualities. My maturity, my sincerity. What do you mean, partly? I mean, aren't they worried because of you? Employment prospects? No, not at all. We've got plans. Because of your reputation? A reputation? What earth are you talking about, Rita? What reputation? Well, you having been a bit of a... and our marriage not working. I mean, don't they... Well, after all, she's their only daughter. Yes, well, you and I were very young, and that lasted 25 years, par for the course. I was talking about love, not golf. Sorry. I don't want to have a row with you today, but... Oh, Ted, some of the things you did. Oh, yeah. Well, don't you think that we sometimes made mountains out of molehills? Doreen from the Friendly Building Society wasn't a molehill. Big Bertha from Nuremberg certainly wasn't a molehill. And as for Liz, well, she was a sexual owl. Oh, yes, yes, all right, Rita, all right, look, that's all in the past. Leaving Sandra for Corinna, it's not that long in the past, Ted. No, well, I'm grateful to Corinna. No, I mean, I am. I believe that Corinna was sent to show me the error of my ways. You know, for much of my life, much of my behaviour has been that of a Burke. Oh, I've surprised you, haven't I? Well, yeah. I know. Difficult to see me as a Burke. No, I'm surprised you see yourself as a Burke. You are. Sorry. Well, anyway, give us a chance. Oh, I mean, I do. I love Sandra. Hmm. Maybe I never before. I see. But no, no, no. I mean, of course. I mean, I loved you. And it went wrong. And now you love Sandra. And it won't go wrong. Well, well yes, because, um, well... Oh, look at that. They've come. <laughs> Danger of meaningful conversation with Ted averted. Oh, Betty. Oh, lovely. How are they? Oh, have a glass of champagne. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cheers. You're looking more beautiful than ever. Nice body pity about the brain. What? No, no, no. You're looking more intelligent than ever, too. I underestimated you. Well, I think so. Is there really no chance at all? None. I'm not sure I don't want to remain without a man forever. But even if I ever decide I don't want to remain without a man, I'd be stupid not to look for one who never thought I wasn't good enough for him. All those negatives. They seem to add up to one and all as negative. That was the general idea. The rat must expect to be deserted by the ships he's helped to sink. Thank goodness there weren't three of you. Three Simcox sons for my daughter to rebel against me by falling in love with me. Do you have to be the central figure even in that scenario? Very good. That's quite an effective little thrust. In some ways you're improving. What a pity I shall never forgive you for destroying my son's career. He destroyed his career. I merely did my duty. To what? Justice. Truth. Fooey. Now, excuse me, I'm just going to disconcert Ted. Thanks, Rita, for your concern. It does your credit. You are? I saw you talking to Ted. You're right, worried about him. How he'll treat me, whether he'll look for bits on the side, like what he did with you. Well, I wouldn't have put it quite like that, but... Look, it's none of my business. No, there's no point. I mean, you married the damage... It... Look, I don't mean the damage. Well, I hope I don't mean the damage. 
Oh, look, Sandra, I shouldn't really be saying anything. You can't understand how I can marry him after he ditched me for that con artist. Well, no, frankly, I can't. Ted apologised. And it was bright, beautiful. It really was. And when I thought about it, I felt he was sincere. Uh, being so false, it opened his eyes to what's real. Well, that's what I reckon, any road. Well, I hope you're right. <laughs> Your Jeffrey's a right yell, isn't he? I beg your pardon. Are you calling my husband that dear, quiet, bearded man over there a right yell? Yeah, cos he is. Mrs. Liz, you came. Yes. Liz, some champagne. Oh, you do have champagne. I heard a dreadful rumour you only had Asti's Fumanti. <laughs> we do. We call it champagne. As you very well know, but we like it. What's so funny, Rita? Well, you're trying to disconcert Ted, and a disconcerter to find you can't disconcert him. And since you bring out the worst in me, I find that funny. Sorry. I'll uh, leave you two together so you can discuss old times. Rita's right. If you come here to laugh at us, don't bother. We're beyond the reach of ridicule. How touching. Yes. Yes, in the... In the peace and tranquility of my love, I feel no old wounds, no bitterness. I hope, I mean, I do, you will find happiness again soon. What, a new man, you mean? No, well, I mean, yes. Half of me never wants to find another man. Half of me understands too late how Neville felt about Drain's death. And the other half? Screams with loneliness, and I can't tell anybody. You just told me. Yes, I did, yes. You're cutting a really rather good figure today. It's absurd, but you're carrying it off. I've always admired that. Suddenly I remember why I once found you so attractive. Thanks for coming. Geoffrey, Sandra says you're a... I don't know how to say it. A right yell. Oh, did she? Oh, that's nice. Well, I do feel at ease among uh, friends and relations. But you've never been even remotely a right yell with me. Mm, of course not. I'm in love with you. But maybe when passion fades in the evening of our lives, my right yellishness will take over. <laughs> what did you say to them? Oh, I was telling them about the peoples I've studied, their customs, rituals, taboos. I told them about the native women who greet the tourists wearing grass skirts and bare breasts when in the back of their hearts there are clotheslines hung with t-shirts and jeans. Uh, I told them of Indians who accept American Express cards for uh, shrunken heads. I told them how the advanced world is dragging the primitive world into its clutches. Some see this as a comedy, I see it as a tragedy, but the dividing line between the two is way for thin. I'm frightened. Well, why, my love, why? Because I don't know you. And what a voyage of discovery awaits you. Elvis, I'm feeling ashamed. I've just been talking to some of your mum's counsellor friends who knew your dad and have rather dropped him. But she's made them promise to go and give him their blessing. You and I should go in there and be nice to each other for your parents' sakes. Yeah, you're right. Thanks. Excuse me, Carol. We're burying our differences and going to give Ted and Sandra our blessing. Smashing. I'll come too. I want to be at peace with every single person in the world. Oh, with the possible exception of Simon. Oh, hello, Simon. We're going up to see Ted and Sandra. You coming? Oh, I can't really. I want to be here when Lucinda arrives. She will come. Well, none of us said anything. You didn't need to. Look, sod off if you're going. So what are these plans then, Ted? You are, Rita. Well, you said you had plans. What sort of plans? <laughs> it's been at least half an hour ago. I know, but it's only just filtered through. Well, come on. Oh, you're not really interested? No, not really. But I keep hoping that if I make the right social noises, one day interest may return. <laughs> come on, Ted. Hmm? What are these plans? Well, ah, uh, uh, good, you came. Uh, of course we did. <laughs> Hello, hi, Dad. Hello, Mum. Hello. Mum? Hey. <laughs> uh, cheers. 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 Just before you came in, Ted was just bursting to tell us about his and Sandra's plans, weren't you, Ted? 
Uh, yes, well. <laughs> oh, what's all this then, Dad? Mm hmm? Yeah, well, uh, just, uh, well, we're just opening a catering outlet. A restaurant, you mean? Well, yes, you know, you know, you know. Um, no, not really, no. I thought you didn't care what folk thought anymore. I don't, I won't when we get over there, but I know this crabby lot, they'll all laugh. Over there? Over where? The A64. The A64? Go on, Ted, tell them, it's your idea. Yeah, well, uh, it's not exactly a restaurant, exactly, it's... It's more like a mobile caravanette borrowed off Sandra's brother, Dean. We're going to be selling snacks from a lay-by on the A64. We'll sell teas and coffees, hot chocolate, bovril soup, soft drinks, fizzy and still, homemade cakes and scones. Yes, it's all Sandra's department. Crisps, buns, sandwiches. Oh, what else? We'll be happy. Oh, yeah. That and all. It's going to be called Ted Snacks. Yes, spelt with an X. Well, that's tremendous. Uh, two Ted Snacks, spelt with an X. Ted Snacks, spelt with an X. You all think it's funny, don't you? Eh? Well, oh, go on. Go on, laugh. We don't care. Don't worry. We'll make a success of it, won't we? I've already got permission off the farmers to put up two ginormous great big signs. One on a horse chestnut westwards and the other on a beech tree eastwards from the lay-by saying, Ted Snacks, 800 yards, don't miss it. And they won't. They won't. People will pour in. It'll be like a license to print money. It will. Rita, I'm surprised at you smirking. Liz, yes, because she's a snob. Ted, not today. Rodney and Betty, yes, because you're probably half cut. Ted? Uh, Elvis, fair enough, cynical little sod. All the youngsters, yes, that's fair enough, too. Mock, 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 cos it's easier than thinking. But you, Rita, you, I never thought you'd go all high and mighty on me. And what about you, Jeffy? What do you think you're doing, renouncing your double barrel, calling yourself Sprag? I mean, you don't fool me. Ted, I thought you didn't have a chip anymore. Well, like a jacket potato. Thank you, Elvis. I can do without your helpful remarks. Thank you very much. I just, just want to be happy and have Sandra's kids. I mean, well, she do have mine. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. They are, see, so they're stunned. It's very touching, Ted. No, oh, it is touching. We never could have them, you know. That's why we love other people so much. Well, if it's what Sandra wants. Oh, it is. Well, if you're sure. I'm not a women's liver, I'm afraid. I want to be dominated by a masterful older man. I want to dominate a younger woman. Who wants to be dominated by a masterful older man? I mean, what you lot want, don't get me wrong. I think it's great. Women should have the right. But it shouldn't be compulsory. There's no cause, no cause in the old world more important than the freedom to choose what suits you. If it's legal. Well, that, that's what I reckon, anyway. Darling. Darling, you've come. Well, of course I did, my darling. You didn't doubt me, did you, my darling? Oh, of course I didn't, my darling. You weren't worried I wouldn't stand by you, were you, my darling? Of course I wasn't, my darling. Champagne, my darling. Madam, a touch of the 83. Mm, please. There you go, tickety poo. You are awfully late, though. I know. Some urgent business cropped up and it involved you. Me? Yes. It's incredibly exciting, but I can't tell you in front of it. Where is everyone? Yes. Where is everybody? Sir, champagne. Oh, the real stuff. Well, if you'll excuse me, I just have to go... Get away from us, of course you do. Rodney! <laughs> Lucinda, you came. 
Surely you didn't doubt your future daughter-in-law? No, no, though why you should think him worth standing by under the circumstances amazes me. Oh, but the circumstances have changed, Mother. I've just phoned him. I'm seeing him tomorrow, sweetie plump. Elvis! Pax. You are? Thanks, old chum. For what you did. Old chum? It's in the bag. Thought it would be? Children, please, what's in what bag? I've just been offered a job by a very large go-ahead firm. What? Why? They seem impressed by what I did at Trellis, Trellis, Hope and Shore and Finch. They admire his go-ahead qualities. What, you mean his dishonesty? They call it my initiative. They would. Who is this firm? I'm not a liberty to say yet. Well, what sort of firm are they? What do they make? Well, they don't make anything. They own things. That figures. So, Elvis, thank you for making my career. Not breaking it. Yes. Thank you, Elvis. I've never really seen you properly before. You're not irredeemably horrendous, are you? Isn't it amazing? Simon thought I ditched him. There I was, digging up a new career for him, supporting him morally and practically so that he can support me in the manner to which I could very rapidly become accustomed. Oh, you have little faith. I'm only just beginning to realise what a strong personality Lucinda is. Isn't it terrific? Terrific? Well, all obstacles to a beautiful friendship are now removed. Oh, but I didn't want to get him a... You really don't like him, do you? No, I don't suppose I do, but it isn't that. I mean, is he the sort of person who gets on in our society? You'll have to answer that. You're the investigative journalist. Come to dinner on Saturday. I'd like to celebrate Simon's job. I'd like to thank you for getting it. Oh, I don't think I could face him so soon. Oh, Simon and Lucinda won't be there. No, no one else will be there. We'll dine alone. We may find no spark. We may become friends, even behind. Oh, don't, don't look so shocked. But you're... So much older than you, congratulations. You inherited your father's tact. Look at the age difference between Ted and Sandra. That's different. He's a man. Oh, Elvis. Oh, how provincial. But you and I are unattached. I mean, we're nothing to anyone. We're free to explore the possibilities at whatever pace we choose. What do you say? Oh, heck. You know, I was rather afraid you would. Elvis, mm -hmm. I meant everything I said earlier. The answer's still no. But I also meant it when I said I wanted to be friends with everyone. So I feel no bitterness. I forgive you. But there it is. What on earth's wrong with you? Mm, uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, just that all these women keep kissing me. Oh. Lucinda, Liz, Carol. Masses of kisses, all for the wrong reason. Oh, poor old Elvis. He looked as sad and clapped out as a teddy bear that doesn't squeak anymore. Mm. Betty. <laughs> oh, dear. Can I do anything for you, sir? New kisses, I'll clock you one. Honestly, young people today. They're not your sort of people. They're friendly to everyone. You're only friendly to your sort of people. Hello. Welcome. Come in, all of you. Exaggeratedly effusive to show me up and make me angry. Well, I won't rise to it. Very wise. Never give people the satisfaction of knowing that they've succeeded in annoying you. That's what I always say. Do you really? How very boring of you. I'd like to hit that woman. Don't give her the satisfaction of knowing she succeeded in annoying you. <laughs> Rodney, are you drunk? Yes. Oh, Rodney, but you don't need to be drunk, because you only get drunk because of your guilty conscience, because of your chickens, but you haven't got a guilty conscience any longer. Yes, I do. I told you that uh, thing with those roads. I'm a sham. You love for me into sham? Oh, no, 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 that isn't. But how do we know spinach doesn't suffer? You are, Rodney. Mm. No, of course he didn't feel it's got no nervous central system. <laughs> nervous spinach, neurotic leaks, paranoid parsnips. Oh, Rodney. <laughs> are you drunk? <laughs> As a rat. <laughs> but that's all right. Because I only get drunk because I'm happy. And because of my larger than love of life. And because today I have been to four weddings. <laughs> but you'll get drunk. 
because you're sad and that makes me sad because when you're sad I don't want you to be sad because when you're sad you get all miserable and when you get all miserable I get all miserable and I get all miserable and I get sad. Oh, Betty. <laughs> oh, Rita. This is goodbye. Yes, Dad. Oh, I... I failed you. All those years. All those wasted years. Well, not entirely wasted. You gave me two sons. But I'll let you down. Well... We had some good times, though, didn't we? Oh, yes. I remember a Thursday. <laughs> oh, come on, no. We had some happy memories. We had some good laughs. Oh, yes. Huh? Yes, I suppose we did. <laughs> yeah. oh. <clears throat> Do you remember that time in Bannard Castle when you slipped on that dog shit? <laughs> <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Is that the humorous highlight of your marital memories? No, no, no. Of course it is. No, it's not. No. <laughs> it was funny ago. <laughs> <laughs> Tim and Rita are laughing a lot. Yes, yes. Expiating the past so that they can live with us without bitterness. No regrets. Ted Simcock, the Edith PF of the A64. No, but it's great, isn't it? <laughs> yes, very touching, yes. Do you remember that, uh, that cocky <laughs> fellow with the flashy yacht? Oh. And he was, he was standing by that bollard in Saint Tropez, and you remember? With those really short shorts. That's one. <laughs> and that very pretty girl went by, yes. and he leaned nonchalantly back and missed his ball. <laughs> and he went base over Apex straight into the harbour. <laughs> <laughs> Rita and Ted, you don't think they wouldn't, would they? They couldn't. Well, of course they couldn't. Not on their end, could they? Well, I mean, I suppose they could. Well, yes, they could. Of course they could, but <laughs> they wouldn't. Would they? <laughs> it was that canal holiday. Yeah. And we, we were trying to take the kids for that bar scene. Oh! <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. And that pompous couple came in behind us, didn't they? And she, and she said, um, she said, I remember she said, what did she say? She said, oh my God, Lionel, it's absolutely crawling with children. <laughs> <laughs> I know, poor Paulie nearly died with embarrassment. <laughs> Dear, oh dear. Are <laughs> well, there still people around like that? Oh, you? yes, I'm afraid they very probably are. <laughs> oh, dear, well, that's absolutely appalling. Absolutely <laughs> appalling. <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing a hell of a lot. Uh, yes, it really is an extremely touching scene. I'd have thought by now that... They'd have expiated vast areas of the past. Yes, so should I. I, I should have thought that a little farewell peck on the cheek would have been coming up by now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a life we could have led if I'd had more sense. Oh, me too, Ted. Needing to be liked, worrying what folk thought morning, noon and night. Mm -hmm. Me too, Ted. What a couple we'd have made if we'd have known what we know now. What a couple we'd have made. There it is. Yes, I'd hardly describe it as a little peck on the cheek. <clears throat> Ruddy hell, no. Oh, I say, Rodney. Better not, Betty. Oh, I wouldn't, Rodney. No regrets, though. You are? Well, I mean, about today. We're not going for second best. Hmm? No, 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 no. I mean, no way. I mean, no. No, we aren't. Good luck, Ted. Yes. Good luck, Rita. Were you worried? Daft. Off. Were you worried? No, no. 
I said no, Rita. <clears throat> uh, we'll, we'll be off in a minute. Liz. If this is going to be yet another appeal for me to treat your home as my own, forget it. Go on, get off. I'll be all right. I'll stick my claws into some poor, unsuspecting... Some poor, unsuspecting... Some poor, unsuspecting, unmarried man. Unmarried? Well, I broke up your marriage. I don't want a repeat of that disaster. Disaster? You put in chain a series of events which ended in Rita marrying me. Precisely. So, this is goodbye. Not goodbye. We'll be dead chuffed if you ever popped in for a cuppa. Sadly, I fear you're going to have to remain dead untruffed. Oh, it'll be right hygienic. Not like these posh restaurants where you get all the chefs spittle in the soup. Our soup will be tinned. Chandra. If you're a bit embarrassed because you once had a bit of a ding-dong with Ted, don't be. There's no need. Thank you, Sandra. You are making this a perfect farewell. You want, Liz? Reminding one why one is so pleased one will never see again the people one will never again see. Oh, oh just a minute. One will see one because one has forgotten that one will be visiting one's son. No, Ted. You can't offer him a parent's love. It's already too late. You'll drift apart. There'll be long, awkward silences in zoos and burger bars. You'll be an embarrassment to him. Me? An embarrassment to my son? When he's at boarding school, a dead lawyer to whom I was once married will be less embarrassing than the live owner of a snack bar in a lay-by. With whom I once had what your wife so charmingly described as a bit of a ding-dong. You mean I should never see him again? I really do think... Would be best, Ted. Hmm. Oh, one tiny social point, Sandra. It's hardly worth mentioning, but one does not refer to people like Liz as having a bit of a ding dong. Sorry. No. No, it's all right. You were great. <laughs> you were. No, oh, you're. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you really are. Mm. We're leaving in a jiffy. Ooh, good move. Sounds much more upmarket than a car. We just wanted to say we have no hard feelings. I have no hard feelings at all. Well, several replies spring to mind. I'll settle for why should you. Precisely. It all looks like working out really well for us. If only we could get Simon's mother fixed up with some suitable man, life would be perfect. Yes, I suppose if she's lonely, she might intrude rather embarrassingly on your yuppie bliss. You're determined to be unpleasant, aren't you? He doesn't need determination. It comes easily to him. <laughs> Some suitable man? What sort of suitable man? I don't know. Just someone I'd be happy seeing mother with, I suppose. It's almost worth it to see your face. You've someone in mind? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Come on, Simon. There are some people I wanted to meet. They could be useful to you. She's so dynamic and strong and organized. It's wonderful. Hello, Mum. Don't say anything, Jenny. What about? Anything. Today, the present, the past, the future. Me, you, Paul, Elvis, Neville, the shanty towns of El Salvador, anything. I couldn't stand it. Don't go away. Mom. <laughs> right. Rita, we're off. Right. Yes, Ted. Well, if you ever find yourself in the vicinity of the A64, you know, you can't miss us. You'll see the sign. Ted's Snacks. It'll either be on the horse chestnut or the beach tree. Yes, upon well, which if way. ever uh, we're in the no. vicinity, we'll, we'll drop in for a cuppa and a slice of Sandra's homemade cake, won't we, darling? <laughs> No. Rita. I don't think I could bear it. Rita. Just in case they weren't happy. Rita, we will be. Won't we, Sandra? Of course we will. There you are, you see. Straight from the horse's... M oh, no, perhaps not. No. Rita, this is it. <laughs> yes. Bye-bye. Ta-ra. Bye-bye. Ta-ra. No, Rodney, it has to be said. I quite agree. I quite agree. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we have an announcement to announce. Oh, 
heck. Well, don't look so alarmed. All right, in the past, we've let the cat out of the bag and the cat's killed a few pigeons coming home to roost when we've had a many too few. <laughs> oh, that's wrong. A few too many. Oh, so many too many. <clears throat> oh, dear, just when for once everything seemed... Oh, how can I put it? Tickety-boo. Amazing. You're both psychic. Have you two finished? Good. We have a message for you all. We, we hope, hope you, you all live, live happily ever after. after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not taking any bets on it. Betty.